It was a Thursday, just like any other Thursday, but wet, very wet. I watched the rain trickle down my windowpane. Would they close because of a bit of rain? Nah, surely not. A few water hazards will make it more fun. You know, add an extra challenge. I love a challenge. I was the champ, the rain and champ, the king of Hesketh Park Golf Course. I'd even mastered getting past that windmill on the final hole. <laughs> I was defending my crown. I say crown. It's actually a little plastic cup. The Tiger Cup, we call it. Named in honour of the great man. It sat proudly on me mantelpiece. The schools have been back from the summer break for, let's see, about six weeks. So it was, of course, half term. Well, the teachers need the rest, don't they? We can't expect them to put him two full months in a row. That might be a bit too much like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, yeah. Where? Dave, who lives in the flat above me, is a heavy rock fan. Noisy bugger he is. Black Sabbath are his favourite. And he's home today. The opening bars of Paranoid pound through his floorboards into my living room. I turn Amy Winehouse up full blast to try and drown it out. But she's fighting a losing battle. Aussie one, Amy nil. Thank God I'm going to be out for the rest of the day. My son Ben is going to be home alone. So my service is pretty quiet in Waterloo. He lives with his mum. I've never lived with him. Never lived with her either. We did talk about it once many moons ago, but thank God it never happened. That's not being mean. I'm sure Nina would say the same about me, but in much stronger terms. Nina was named after my favourite jazz singer, Nina Simone. I thought fate had brought us together. I was wrong. Nina Simone? Nina, she moans more like. And now, well, me baby certainly doesn't care for me. No way. We have a relationship of sorts, but it's just as Ben's mum and dad. We are a family. Just a different type of family. One where the dad lives two miles away. The parents don't really speak to each other. We usually communicate by text messages. Text messages using as few words as possible. I've got it down to a fine art. It drives her crackers, which is not a bonus. <laughs> Ping. I'm working from home tomorrow. That means my services are not required. OK, send. Ping. Not home tomorrow. That means my services are required. OK. Send. Ping. Ben's got a dentist appointment at 4.15. That's your way of telling me that I'm taking him. You've guessed it. OK. Send. I tried to keep my response to two letters, minimalist I am. Till us all got it wrong. Two is the magic number. But I would never, ever reply with that one letter. That one bloody letter, you know the one, where five points in Scrabble, K. It does me at it. You might as well say, you are not worth the extra millisecond it would have taken me to type the letter O. I don't mind people sending emojis and stuff like that. At least you've taken the time to, you know, view the list and choose one, even if it is just a board and thumbs up. But you can take your Ks you can take your stinking case and shove them where the sun doesn't shine, sideways. If anyone, and I don't care who it is, if anyone texts me the letter K, they always get the same response. Beginning with F and ending in F. The whole seven letters. Not the abbreviated version. They get the whole seven wonderful letters. In capitals. Not many people send me text messages these days. I don't know why. Me and Nina split the childcare duties on a typical day. I collect Ben from school, cook his tea, 
watch a bit of CBBBs together, and maybe play a few games on his Xbox. Till his mum's car pulls up. That's when I make a sharp exit. It's an unusual setup, but it works. There's no screaming or fighting, no argument. And Ben gets to spend quality time with both of us. During the school holidays, I do the lion's share of childcare. I'm not complaining, I like it. I received a text message from Nina yesterday evening. Ping, not home tomorrow. Okay, send. She always leaves it as late as possible to let me know. Well, there's more chance of messing up any plans I might have made then, isn't it? I rung Ben, told him we'd be heading to Southport for a bit of fine dining. We love that KFC on the seafront. Anyway, with a menu that includes the words bucket of, is all right with me. Southport, cool. Can we play golf as well, Dad? You betcha, mate. I'll polish the cup. Come and have a go if you think you're good enough. He won't win. He's never won. He's dyspraxic, you know, clumsy, extra clumsy. He struggles holding the putter straight. He's no Rory McIlroy. His ball can end up anywhere. Especially if he gets angry and starts lashing out, which happens far too often. We spend more time in the bushes hunting for lost balls than we do on the sodden course. I get some weird looks from the other parents. They think I'm taking the leak, which of course I'm not. Well, not usually anyway. I even got questioned by a busy once that cheeky get. Give some people a uniform and it goes straight to the red. I try and let Ben win the first few holes. But by then, an impatient queue is built up behind us and we need to kick on. So it usually ends up 7-2 to me. There used to be loads of weeping, wailing and gnashing of teeth as we made our way around the course. But I've learned to control myself a bit better now. When I roll up at Ben's house, Nina, she moans, is waiting on the step with her face like thunder. What's her problem? I'm only ten minutes late. She's wearing this awful purple anorak to keep the rain off. I don't know why she's bothered. I'm sure it's waterproof like, but I'm also sure she looks like a complete twonk. She'd be better off getting wet and maintaining some dignity. She's packed all of her work stuff into this massive handbag, which she clutches to her chest. I'm tempted to say, which one are you, Tinky Winky? But think better of it. No words are exchanged. She doesn't even look at me. She just storms past climbs into a mini and flies off like Lewis bloody Hamilton smoke pouring from her exhaust as she goes. Yeah, you have a nice day too, Nina. Ben's watching a DVD. Mr. Ben. I bought it for him a while back. Mr. Ben was my favourite when I was little. I made up he likes it too. I'm sure he's been to the loo and I go myself. I don't fancy stopping halfway to Southport for a pee in the sand dunes. Not in this weather. Too much risk of blowback. I dig out Ben's waterproof jacket. It's looking small on him. Another growth spurt. As well, he's a bit tight too. But he says they feel okay, so we're good to go. 15 miles up the coast to the Riviera of the northwest Southport. Merseyside's answer to Blackpool's answer. To Las Vegas. As we drive, the rain gets heavier and the wind's picking up too. I take the coast road. The grass on the sand dunes, which normally stands straight and proud, is flattened by the gusts blowing in from the Irish Sea. And my windscreen wipers are fighting a losing battle against the torrential rain. I need to prepare Ben for the worst. Ben, I say, um, with all of this rain, the crazy golf might be closed, mate. It could be flooded. He thinks for a second and then says, Maybe we could play underwater golf, Dad. I'm a good swimmer. I might win that. I think you've just invented a new sport, Ben. But don't think you're getting hands on the Tiger Cup. Catch his face in the rearview mirror. He's smiling. That's good. We arrive in Southport at a park up at the Ocean Plaza. 
The weather has kept the crowds away. Anyone with any sense is at home in front of a nice warm fire. I wish I was at home too. The rain starts to ease as we fasten up our jackets and head over to the KFC buffeted by the wind. I notice that the place looks eerily quiet, which is strange. I've never seen it so empty. As we get closer, I see an ambulance parked out front and there's a bloke in a KFC uniform standing by the entrance. He waves us away. Sorry, mate, we're closed till later. I can see inside a pair of paramedics are fussing around the pensioner. She's sitting in a wheelchair with an oxygen mask strapped to her face. She looks pale, and has a nasty scrape on her forehead, but she's conscious and seems lucid. A glance at Ben, his bottom lip is starting to quiver. Don't worry, she's going to be fine, I say. She probably just fainted or something. I don't want him getting upset. He nods. He's on the verge of tears, either at the sight of the old lady or at the realisation that his mighty bucket of chicken might have to wait till another day. I need to think fast before the floodgates open, before the water wicks start, before he starts wailing his bloody head off. Think, think. Ah. How about we find a cafe that serves cheesy baked potatoes? He likes cheesy baked potatoes. And you can have cake as well. It's the promise of cake that does it. Can I have millionaire shortbread? He asks, breaking up. Of course you can. You can have trillionaire shortbread if you want, Ben. He laughs. As I speak, I'm rifling through my brain, desperately trying to think of somewhere that serves baked potatoes and millionaire shortbread. Marks and Sparks, that's it. Good old Marksies. They've got a cafe there, haven't they? Or restaurant, as they like to call it. That's our best bet. It's a five minute walk and we arrive at Marxie's looking like a pair of drowned rats. The cafe, sorry restaurant, is up on the second floor. Two escalator rides and yes, they serve cheesy baked potatoes and there in the dessert cabinet us by a plate of millionaire shortbread. Result, major result, back of the net. The place is chocolate though, full of old people and the smell of wet pensioners hangs in the air. We manage to find an empty table tucked away in the corner. Ben takes off his coat, plonks himself in his seat, looking happy. And if he's happy, I'm happy. I head over to the counter to place our order. I fancy something exotic, so I go for the Spanish omelette. And we sit amongst the legions of pensioners waiting for our food. Then a miserable shower. They complain about their dodgy hips, the price of bacon, the delays in Brexit kicking in. This wouldn't have happened under Margaret Thatcher, one of them says. I try and chewing them out, but it's difficult. Most of them are hard of hearing, and they're shouting their bloody heads off. Ben flicks through his bee, you know it's wet. His backpack must have sprung a leak. Big potato? I look up. A waitress is standing over our table holding the tray. Dark hair, dark eyes, olive skin. She's stunning. Bit rough around the edges, maybe. But stunning nonetheless. I can't find any words, I just stare at her. She frowns, big potato, she repeats impatiently. Luckily, Ben steps in. Yes, please, he says. She places the plate in front of him and looks me in the eye. My heart skips a beat. Omelette? she asks. Her English is perfect, but there's a hint of an accent, Polish, Romanian maybe. Come on, say something, man, say anything, speak to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. I eventually manage. That, that accent, um, Eastern European, is it? She glares at me. No, no, it is not Eastern European. Why does everybody think that? Well, it's just that I am from Seville. I've lived in this stinking town for 15 years, but I am from Seville, you know, in Spain. K? Okay? K, okay, she says. K? Okay. Not okay. Just K. Okay. I'm obviously not worth the effort it would take 
to say the extra letter. I'm not worth the waste of breath. She looks me at me with fire in her eyes. I stare back at her and I say, five points out worth in Scrabble. A stupider, she says. If you want any condiments, fetch them yourself. She turns on her heel and storms off. Did uh, she call you stupid? Asks Ben. I think she might have. He laughs. She's naughty. I know. Magnificent, isn't she? Do you fancy coming back here tomorrow? <laughs>